Hi, this is Blender Chapter 3. We're going to look at a few more concepts that we need to cover before you can finish your assignment. So, another quick tip. If you're scaling, you can just type in a number. So, you can see the scale tool there. I just pressed S and 2, and then it'll scale by a factor of 2. If I want to scale by a factor of 3, I need to press 3. Oops, that's 23. I have to press Escape. If I want to scale by a factor of 3, I just enter 3. Okay, we're going to look at basic modifiers, and that would be the Boolean modifier. I need to add another object in order to use the Boolean modifier. So, Shift A to add mesh. I'm going to add a UV sphere. And I'm going to drag it out here. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a chunk out of this cube using the sphere as the modifier. So we have to select the cube because that's what we want to modify. So we're going to add a modifier. It's going to be Boolean. And we're going to select the sphere. And intersection is not what we want. Intersection will do the area that's common to both sphere and cube. We actually want to take a chunk out of the cube, so we'll do difference. Okay, and this is better viewed in wireframe. So if we take Z, you can see that the sphere has taken a chunk out of the cube. And then to finalize this, we select apply. And then I'm going to select the sphere and just move it out of the way. Let's turn shading back on. And you can see that there's a hole inside the cube in the shape of a sphere. Okay. The next thing you need to learn is when we do this and we try to do smooth shading on the cube, now the shading looks funny. Okay, because it's trying to do smooth shading between the edge of the sphere hole with the flat planes here. So, we need to select the vertices. And we want to turn on Auto Smooth. Okay. And we have to estimate the angle between the hole and the plane, and that's about 90 degrees. So anything above 60 degrees, we don't want to have Auto Smoothing. Okay. Now we can see that the inside of the hole is Auto Smooth, and the face of the cube is left untouched. Okay, we'll turn that off again. So flat shading, smooth shading, and ignoring this. So you can play with the different angles. If this is too high, then you get the weird shading again. So you need to adjust the numbers. It's not always going to be the same. So 45 worked for this as well. Just play with the numbers until the shading looks proper. Okay, let's take a look at our rubric again. We just finished the Boolean modifier and smooth. And just to review, smooth is on the vertex tab. And smooth is over here. And we did the Boolean modifier, which is this wrench. So add Boolean. And we did the difference. You can play with the other settings as well. So what do we have left to do? We need to remove duplicates. We need to look at camera tracking to empty and some basic lighting. So tab, we have 325 vertices. And what we can do is we can just remove doubles to see if it cleans it up. No, no vertices were removed. Okay, so sometimes you get extra vertices when you're editing your mesh. So I'll show you an example of this. Deselect everything. I'm going to select the top face. And we extrude. And we extrude. 
And sometimes you hit extrude and you don't move it. And these vertices are now doubled up. So now if I remove doubles, you'll see that four vertices is removed. Removing the extra vertices just makes it easier to edit. Because when you're trying to select a vertice, it keeps toggling between the two vertices that are on top of each other, and it just makes editing difficult in the future. And it just reduces the number of calculations as well. So if everything looks good, you should always just try removing doubles. Okay, camera tracking. So let's take a look at what the camera's pointing at. It's pointing at that. Go back to top view. I'm going to move the camera. It's going to be in object mode. I'm going to move the camera. And then I'm going to go to camera view. Now it's pointing at something else. And it gets to be painful to keep rotating the camera to point at what you want to point. So I rotated it. Now it's actually skewed and it's not pointing upwards. The best thing to do is add an empty. So I'm going to deselect all, press A, and I'm going to do Shift A, and we're going to add an empty, and plain axis is good enough. Okay, so the empty is sitting in the middle of the cube here, so we want wireframe. I'm going to select the camera, and I'm going to Shift right click and when you're selecting the camera or the cube you're right clicking I'm shift right clicking the empty and I'm going to press control T and I'm going to track to constraint notice how the camera shifted a little there I press zero and now I'm tracking to this empty and I'm going to go to top view again and I'm going to right click on the camera and I'm going to move it a little bit further back and now the cube's totally in view and it's pointing the right way. I'm going to go front view. So I want to look down on the cube a little bit more. So I'm going to move it up. Notice how it's pointing towards the empty. There we go. Okay. I could have said track to the cube, but what if I want to focus on the sphere? Okay, so I've moved the empty to the sphere, and the camera's tracking to it. It makes camera tracking so much easier, especially if you're going to animate it or animate your objects. Okay, so that's camera tracking. Let's look at basic lighting. So let's render the scene as it is. Okay, so we have one light and the shadows are very harsh. And this is not realistic. It's more real to add two lights to your scene. So let's press escape to go back and go to top view. Ideally, you want even lighting. So the light should be to the left and right of the camera. So I have one light there. It's not very high. If you want to make it look more like sunlight, you're going to raise the lights a little bit higher. Okay, so I'm just going to render this just to check the light. It's very dim. So what I'd like to do is click on this icon, which is the light. And if we just take a look at the light position, this is 23 and 16. So if you do a little bit of math there, the distance is going to be about 27, 28, and 30 is just not close enough. So if we make this number bigger, it means the light will be brighter at longer distances. So now if we render, it's much brighter. Okay. If we want it to be even brighter than this, we can actually just raise the energy level instead of the distance, render again, and that's brighter still. 
Okay, and again, I said we want two lights. Let's go to the overhead view. And remember, duplicate is Shift-D, and we want one light on the other side. Now, if we render it, we still have some shadows, but for the most part, things are lit up. And if you wanted to get rid of the bottom shadows, not make them so harsh, we'll go to the front view. We'll duplicate this light and bring it down low. And what we'd like to do is, because this is coming from below, we don't want this light to be nearly as strong. We just want to lighten up the shadows and render. And there you go. If that's... If you don't think the shadows are dark enough, you can just lower this number. Okay. And we're not going to get into coloring or textures yet. That's for another chapter. And that completes this lesson.